DDG episode 93. My name is Dave Hunt, and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How is it going, Dave? I got to get used to it. I'm recording with my glasses again. Headphones are a little uncomfortable right now. How's it going, Dave? I feel like I ha- it's been uh, a while I'm- since we've talked, but it was just last week. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a week, uh, like two Mondays in a row, uh, just because of my personal schedule with stuff going on. Uh, finally, like after taking a month off <laughs> for unbeknownst reasons to us, my, my softball playoff started, and now they're every Tuesday. <laughs> Um, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, still doing overnights, obviously. So that's uh, messing with my clock still. But I'm getting kind of more into a routine. My weekends suck, though. Like <laughs> I tried to stay up on Friday, fell asleep. Stay up on Friday to help my daughter get ready to move into her dorms and make sure she's all packed, which pretty much meant leave my wife and daughter alone while they, why why she decided if she was taking 14 leggings or 12 leggings to to college. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So and that and then I passed out like Friday afternoon for a couple hours and then had a relatively normal night sleep uh, Friday night and then it's just yeah good. Like waking up on Sundays after that and then trying to work through the day Monday is always or through into Monday morning is always rough but I'm fine I'm healthy uh, I don't know what day it is but you, know, you just <laughs> other spent than what the cal- five minutes other than what the calendar Monday. tells me okay, yeah yeah so <laughs> other than what the calendar tells me so. Um, in terms of like when when I talk about hey we're gonna do this tomorrow or tonight or next shift like that's kind of like yeah. where like a lot of my my lingo comes from but uh, anyway we are Digital Days Gaming we are a weekly show that goes live on Twitch on Mondays or Tuesdays uh, Twitch TV slash Digital Days Gaming uh, as well as you can visit our website uh, digitaldaysgaming.com where you can see the ability to subscribe to all the podcast services that we use or that ho- that you may use that we're on. Uh, and you can leave us a review. That's always helpful, um, as well as um, giving us a subscription on Twitch if you so choose. Uh, if you want to link Amazon Prime to Twitch Prime, you can do that. Or you can just do a paid sub, and there's other links in the show notes, uh, Facebook group, Discord, all that stuff is there. So we're going to jump right into the news with Michael. Yeah, all right. So the Activision saga continues. We didn't talk too much about it last week because uh, everything was still unfolding, but I feel like enough stuff has happened over the course of the last like week and a half, two weeks, that we probably should just do a, a, a recap. So instead of going over this week by week, unless something big happens, we might as well just uh, do little catch-ups here and there. And this will be the first uh, what's new in Activision Blizzard land. Um, all, all bad news, obviously, going on over there. Uh, but let's... Uh, I'll go through the list if there's anything in particular, Dave, that you want to talk about or add some input. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll stop from going through the list, but there's so much happening right now that uh, this isn't even everything that that I found. Uh, There's so much (laughs) more going on here. Uh, But anyone I might have missed last week or the the week before his episode, uh, Activision right now, Activision Blizzard, specifically Blizzard, uh, is being sued by the state of California uh, for uh, all sorts of harassment. Uh, there are so many different forums. It's a very crazy environment, it appears, that Blizzard has been running under for, for several years now. Um, so the lawsuit has now led to uh, J. Allen Brack, the president of Blizzard, stepping down, uh, and he has been replaced by Jen O'Neill and Mike Yabara. Uh, the former Jen O'Neill, I believe, is former like head of Vicarious Visions, who earlier this year were folded into Blizzard. Uh, so this is like the first big move in terms of changing the culture over there, uh, because obviously under uh, Jay Allen, the uh, the culture was terrible, and Vicarious mm-hmm. Visions, the successful Activision studio, was folded in. So now they want to put those leads in charge to hopefully change the way things are going over there. And it makes Vicarious Visions change kind of make more sense now, because again, this isn't new to Blizzard. They knew this was coming eventually. Mm -hmm. So this makes the Vicarious Vision thing just make just a little bit more sense of why they brought the whole studio in there. Do we have any background on Yabara? Um, Not too much. It's a, they've been with Activision for a while, but I believe uh, they're from the Activision branch. They're not moved up from, uh, that, yeah, if I, I, that would be the that would be the biggest concern I have is if you're just putting somebody else in charge that was already underneath somebody already. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that would that would be problematic in my opinion. But I don't know anything about him. Um, 
then you know hopefully like uh jen o'neill and mike uh, yabara can you know begin to slowly change the you know the dynamic and the culture of what's been happening there oh um and everything we've heard it seems to be on the blizzard side strictly so like people are like oh look at what activision is doing well this was probably going on before activision purchased yeah, blizzard yeah. Uh, mike your is formerly of xbox so you have someone from vicarious visions and someone from xbox coming in to basically change the culture of blizzard okay uh, so okay yeah th that's good yeah um uh, yeah, that's a good thing. So. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good idea to to just change out the leadership completely and people from two successful like one successful developer and then one successful like it came from Xbox. So, um, so uh, Activision Blizzard is also being sued by investors. Uh, this is a class action lawsuit. Uh, they are suing them because they feel like Blizzard Act Activision Blizzard were withholding information that they should have told investors. Uh, basically. The thing of like, there's no way for Activision Blizzard not to know they were being investigated, and uh, the fact that they didn't tell investors has basically put it in that realm where you can get a class action lawsuit rolling. Uh, but don't get this twisted. This isn't a lawsuit because they're upset about the treatment of employees. This is this is a lawsuit because the stock price plummeted and they want to know and they're mad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So like, <laughs> this isn't one of those things where it's just you know. Like, this is this comes down to money for for this, but it just yeah. adds to the pile of stuff that Activision Blizzard is going to have to be going yeah. through for the foreseeable future. If if for some unbeknownst reason, like the stock price hadn't changed or altered that much, this wouldn't be a thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, unless they were disgruntled, so. you know, former investors. Yeah, uh, and I also, I guess, I guess, how do you feel? Like, is this? I mean, I guess this is kind of in a gray area is if the company's under any kind of in, either internal or external investigation, do you feel like they needed to notify their investors? If you were being investigated by the government, I don't know how you relay that information to your investors, but mm -hmm. I, they're in a weird area, I think. I, 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 it's a gray area in terms of like, Mm -hmm. They do need to, they're a public traded company, they need to notify or keep some sort of notification, but they also were probably hoping to sweep this under the rug, so. Right, yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, they're like, okay, well, like, the state of California is investigating us, we'll make a couple of adjustments, we'll put some, uh, you know, additional harassment training in our criteria and our onboarding process, and we'll say that we have... Um, you know, we hire like I don't know. I, I I don't. I'm not trying to demean anybody when I say this. Like, oh, we're gonna promote somebody to employment relations and have them go through this process to yeah. help us. You know, help our culture and hope that that would have like deemed the deemed worthy enough to the state of California. And I think you even mentioned a couple weeks ago. Okay, like here's your fine for X amount of millions of yeah. dollars for violations of you know people's benefit people's you know comfortableness to yeah, work well um, yeah. and. and yeah, well-being. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Um, and so, and and something like that would have came out as a as a basic news story that would have maybe lasted a couple of days and then moved on. Versus this massive lawsuit of like, I haven't seen. I I've seen like the graph of like Activision Blizzard stock price like going like way down, um, but I haven't seen anything reporting about like player count decreases it dramatically in anything. No, it. Not that, I, but I haven't been looking for so it. So other numbers have already been going down because, uh, like, in reality, you, you want to be looking at WoW right. and you want to be looking at Overwatch because uh, those are yeah. Blizzard properties. Overwatch has been on, like, a spiral for about a year mm -hmm. and Blizzard or WoW has also been going down because of just bad expansions and then Final Fantasy fourteen taking over the MMO Yeah, space. like that... And then their biggest like content creator would, like took a break from WoW, right? I, basically, he went from like five days a week WoW to one day a week uh, to switch yeah. on Final Fantasy fourteen. And Final Fantasy fourteen is now like doing better than it's done in like. Yeah, three there, it's been it's years. it's been led to believe that he he was like the the igniter for Final Fantasy fourteen, like selling out of like its digital codes on Steam or something. Yeah, yeah, because then it led to yeah. like other streamers in that space to be like, well, let me jump yeah. on this too. So and, yeah. I think that. That happened before the lawsuit. Yes. 
and then the law and then so like i said that was like the like the, that kind of lit the fire and it was kind of like it was starting to 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 burn and then this lawsuit like flamed the fire yeah. of like okay let's just get off of this but like making like trying to pinpoint exactly like okay this number is already going down yeah is this because of the lawsuit it's continuing to go down yeah. or is it just because that's just where things are going yeah. Uh, what what really sucks what really sucks though is like we've been talking about is that this is heavily on the Blizzard side and minimal on the Activision side, and I think that you know in typical fashion like people are like, well, look, this is just typical Activision. Like, okay, well, it's not. And like, we'll Activision, get to that. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, you know, like I'm not saying that they have the, the you know any companies without their issues, yeah. but I feel like you know some people like uh, again my connection with Destiny like Bungie had to come out with Bungie came out or felt they needed to come out with a statement, pretty much saying, just a reminder, we're not with that company anymore. Yeah, yeah. a <laughs> like, lot of people so, uh, had yeah, to do that. So. Um, so speaking of Activision, so Activision, uh, one of their executives, uh, Francis Townsend, who previously worked like as a face of the Bush administration for a while um, in terms of torture policy uh, was hired by Activision, uh, which isn't anything crazy. People that go that are in the political realm move over to corporate yeah. realms all the time. Uh, but Francis Townsend decided to tweet out like an anti whistleblower article um, during, you know, like don't, don't do that. Uh, but then when employees started to question her about that, she just started to block employees left and right on Twitter, uh, which isn't a good look. Um, she mm -hmm. uh, has basically been forced to step down from some public facing roles in Activision. I believe she's still working for Activision, uh, but also deleted her social media uh, just because it's just like right now you can't you can't do stuff like that. And uh, like the microscopes on you as a company and as an executive, mm -hmm. you can't do that. Um, and then Activision is reportedly uh, hired a like a firm that is known for union busting uh, to be like a mediator with the Blizzard employees, uh, which isn't a good sign uh, for the employees mm -hmm. and is also a terrible look for Activision. So Activision is this kind of they're not doing themselves any favors at all, uh, but they right. are so are a public traded company that are trying to make profits. So yeah, that's 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 the unfortunate yeah. part is like like the Activision as a corporation is probably trying to do whatever it can to save its investments. Yeah, and that sucks like, because like and and it, and it looks they looked they looked terrible to bring this mediator in whose track record is to do you know is, like you said is to break unions up, um, which you know there isn't a union within Activision Blizzard, so that's you know but there is going to be some form of a negotiation, obviously in terms of like how the the relationship with the upper management is to the employees, like that has to change, yeah. but at the at the same time like. Not that anybody on the Activision side was unaware of what's going on, but at you know, like I, I don't. There may have been some things of like to like maybe they knew it was like I don't I, putting it on a scale. Maybe they knew there was issues that were like six, seven, and eight, and now we find out that they're really like a twelve. Yeah, yeah, and and now Activision doing the evil corporation thing or doing the evil corporation stuff to protect themselves, uh, and it's just like snowballing. Uh, more and more and it's just kind of crazy uh how far it's going um other stuff uh overwatch league has now lost t-mobile kellogg's coca-cola and like five other companies as uh mm -hmm. investors uh and sponsors uh, and overwatch league is already having issues because you know they've had their own like player issues going on with like allegations towards players or just players general attitudes uh turning out to be kind of rotten uh this is ultimately probably going to be the the end of overwatch league at this point when you have all your major sponsors bailing out on you uh it probably mm -hmm. isn't a good sign for overwatch league uh and then uh obviously uh not as important as everything going on but overwatch 2 is looking like a 2023 game so Overwatch League now needs to like spread itself with the same game that's stagnated for the next two years and has also now lost a bunch of sponsors. So we're probably going to see like the end of Overwatch League relatively soon. They were already kind of struggling a little bit anyways because of not being able to have fans, right? I yeah. mean, 
yeah yeah they they yeah. the the whole they had to basically move it to an online thing so it just kind of right. turned into something where they just yeah, couldn't get cause... away with it anymore yeah so it's not that's not super surprising with you know this uh, you know compounded with the covid pandemic um is could definitely be you know the death of this and i could also see hopefully if blizzard can you know survive this on this major issue and make huge changes in their upper management and then overwatch 2 does come out in mid to late 2023 starts to get a good bearing again possibly as a you know a, a good competitive uh shooter game again um you know 2024 like you could possibly see the return of this multiple years away from the problems that they're having now and you know back to or not back to but progressing down whatever new normal we're going to have you know going forward post pan you know post worldwide pandemic yeah yeah uh but now now they're in a point of just like can we keep it running uh to right. a point where they can survive losing all these sponsors and then knowing that they have kind of an uphill battle so that's all the craziness with Activision Blizzard. We'll, we'll we'll talk about this stuff more as it unfolds, or if it builds up into a huge list again, we'll we'll definitely talk about that again. Uh, the the next story, uh, which is just you know we, we we do some like speculating on this one. Uh, so take two uh, did a financial report. We're kind of in financial report season again. Uh, I forget exactly mm -hmm. when the quarter ends or if it already ended, uh, but take two. Uh, talk to the investors and release like a bunch of slideshows all that stuff uh but in those slideshows uh they revealed they have one new game amounts uh, announcement coming this month uh this is likely the firaxis marvel game uh so the xcom developers uh doing a uh a mm -hmm. marvel title uh that leaked uh, a couple months ago uh so that is going to be announced this month uh but they said they have six games in the works right now uh gta 5 gta 5 online as a standalone game and then Kerbal Space Program. And then the three other games are being classified as remakes and remasters. So take two, you know, they, they have the rights to Borderlands, but those have all been remastered uh, within the last mm -hmm. like five years. Same goes for the Bioshock games. And then their other studio obviously is, is Rockstar. Uh, so people are speculating that, you know, we might get either some GTA uh, remakes or bully uh maybe the warriors uh maybe table tennis like that, that like honestly there's not too many other things i can think of over mm -hmm. with rockstar uh so this is going to be something to speculate on like what can they remake or remaster and everyone's looking at rockstar games because that's kind of all they have right now based on what they've done in the last like five years yeah um i mean like obviously they're not going to be like remastering any of their basketball games or anything like that. Uh, yeah. So in terms of their their library isn't extensively deep. I mean they like you to your point they've ju they've just essentially did Mafia recently. Yeah, Mafia. I forgot about um, them. Yeah, they've done some other you know some other games. So the the list of what's possible. I mean I think there's a ton of people that would like to see like almost like a Vice City or something mm -hmm. like that to this standpoint um, to be brought up. Uh, to you know just get a remake remaster just like even just i i feel like at this point in time if they could just you know release you know even something like gta 3 or vice city um and just you know have it run at like 60 frames and next gen update i think people would be pretty happy with that yeah yeah especially like the the last like re-releases we got they were, were on the ps4 but they were the like mobile uh version of the game remastered and no one was happy with that. So I, I would imagine we'd probably be looking at that. Bully seems like it would probably be the easiest to remake uh, in terms of its scale as an open world. Uh, the only issue I ha I, I could see with Bully is uh, the some of the stuff they have you do in Bully was very acceptable back then. Uh, and now right. it would be probably something that they would have to either re-edit, which would piss people off, or just put it out and deal with what would happen mm -hmm. uh, which would be a lot of people upset with some of the content in that game uh even though it, it is a good game it's still fun to play uh but i get to see like the the the, the world we're in now might not be more except might not be embracing of uh bully uh but yeah i'm guessing mm -hmm. maybe grand theft auto 3 i don't know max Payne. they still own the max Payne games uh they could probably True. do something with those uh, but I wouldn't. I would be totally happy with like a GTA Three or Vice City, 
uh, like full mm-hmm. remaster, uh, especially. It still sounds like they don't know what they're doing for like Grand Theft Auto Six and what it can turn into. Uh, we've heard things of like it's going to be a like a live service well, and, expansion and, and based game. They don't, they don't have to with people still buying five. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So like, <laughs> what do you do in that scenario when you don't want to kill five because it's a cash cow and probably doesn't require much money to be put into it? You remaster some old games to like make people yep. happy. So this totally makes sense for them. Mm. Uh, it's just. Add the add add the microtransactions to GTA Three. Clean the menus up. You know. Yeah, uh, like it, <laughs> they they could go like a full scale remaster if they want, but I, I think people would be happy if they could just get the original. I think stuff. we would have. I think we would have heard about that by now. Like that would have kind of like leaked or been. Rumored. Yeah, it would have taken time to to do that. So it would have. So like we're yeah. probably just gonna get cleaned up, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, like ports of these. Like, hey, we put the, we 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 put the disc in the PS5 and it started just doing this, so we just kind of built on it. Yeah, like just basic <laughs> stuff of just like, hey, we actually got the full soundtrack this time. Uh, yeah, and- low low times. I think that if you got better load times, um, like I said, maybe clean up the menus, you could just kind of give it a modern day control brush through, like just like that's let's clean up the driving a little bit. Um, you know, just stuff like that. The I mean, I I spent so long since I played any GTA game, but like I feel like you know, hit detection, maybe just like how you accept missions and turn missions in. You know, if they cleaned up a lot of like a lot, a lot of quality of life stuff, I think people would be pretty happy with that to revisit it. You know, with with ultra wide settings on their you know in 4K on their computers or on their consoles. You know. Yeah, I think people would buy that. Uh, and they're probably big enough games that Take Two will just release them single. Like by themselves, yeah. like I don't think we're gonna get a Grand Theft Auto collection. I think they would probably right. try and charge anywhere from forty to seventy dollars, depending on what consoles they're coming yeah. out on. Uh, so not excited. I, and about I don't that. blame them. I mean, in terms in terms of like the numbers that Five has put up with on three different generations now, or it's soon to be the third generation, right? It's coming to PS Five. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, So it's P- yeah. So it's three, gonna be four, three five. generations for this. Yeah. Um, it, I don't blame them. Like you know, like let's put it out there and let's see what happens. And it's GTA. Like it's it's always been in the top ten selling games at the end of the year and quarterly and monthly. I feel like it's always it's always been right yeah, there. Yeah, it lives on the NPDs uh, in the top yeah. ten or even when it slips, it's like number eleven or number twelve, and then it just comes right back yeah. Uh, to it. Yeah, I, I I think I would really like a Warriors remake uh, that is a licensed game that rockstar made i don't think it would be too hard to get the license again and because it's the warriors which was really close to the movie Mm -hmm. they could probably get away with just releasing that again and then if there's anything problematic they can be like well it's from the movie that's a classic yeah uh, and get away with it i i i I still feel like michael we would have heard like something like that we would have like something would have been rumbling schreier would have had some cryptic tweet about it or something like that like if something like that was happening because look at the stuff that i saw this week on twitter like i didn't even know this was a thing but like sabin was apparently working on an arkham style power rangers co-op game yeah there's a lot of weird stuff like that that's been kicking around lately like, do you know how cool that sounds yeah yeah it's yeah. like that's that's one of those ones like i've always said like i want a ninja turtle game i, I kind of forgot about the power rangers like in terms like that would be like a super fun game i think oh no like, that, that, that would have been great like it was super disappointing to hear that like something like that was canceled especially after we like, just immediately immediately my head was like running like oh you could have had like versions of them not in there's not morphed and you could have had versions of them morphed you could have had missions unmorphed missions morphed missions in in the in the um in the droids like, like yeah or in the, the mega zord like Megazord, yeah. yeah, and the Zords. Like you could have had all that. Like that, shit, that could have been so. Especially cool. now that I'm so sad. Know, especially <laughs> after we got like the fighting game that turned out to be really good. Of just like, oh, yeah. you can do some stuff with yeah. the Power Rangers, uh, apparently. But like again, like I, I, I love it. But that that asymmetrical style of like Batman combat with Power Rangers, yeah, would have been like... great. And then it could potentially have turned into a co op <laughs> game. Uh, where you yeah, multiple rangers. Uh, yeah, uh, just, it just makes me want Gotham Knights even more. <laughs> hopefully, that's good. Uh, hopefully, that extra time yeah. uh, they can really <laughs> get into it and, and make it a oh, fun please. game. Um, please, 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 please. Uh, this story I just put on uh, the thing. Like it just broke today, uh, but this is just like, hilarious. Uh, F- so for a- F you in your cuts, I'm just gonna buy you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Fortnite, obviously, they were suing. Or not Fortnite. Epic was suing Apple over the uh, Fortnite microtransaction monopoly lawsuit. It's a whole messy thing we covered for like 
probably two months. Uh, yeah. They also, Epic Games, were suing Google uh, for the same thing. They have a monopoly because of Google Play Store. They dictate what happens on that store, and they get a very specific cut. Uh, not a lot of juicy stuff has come out from that that we didn't already hear from the Apple lawsuit, but it was revealed that Google at one point just considered buying Epic Games. Like, they <laughs> thought of... Like, I don't even know, like... That's the crazy amount of money stuff that we just will never fathom Mm -hmm. to where Epic Games, a billion dollar corporation, was pissing Google off and Google, a bigger billion dollar corporation, was like, what if we just buy them to shut them up? And Mm -hmm. uh, Tim uh, Sweeney confirmed uh, this story on Twitter uh, that he wasn't even aware that they were considering uh, purchasing his company. Uh, but it sounds like either they were looking into just buying them outright or working with other corporations to then do kind of a takeover, like Vivendi mm-hmm. to Ubisoft style. Uh, but there's nothing else to that story other than just like that is wild shit. That is just like crazy, crazy amount of money uh, involved in that. But mm-hmm. holy shit, that would have been like insane. <laughs> It makes me wonder, like, the, the first thing I thought when I saw this was, like, okay, so I could see, like, Xbox, Microsoft, like, Phil Spencer going to, like, a, scheduling a meeting with Bethesda and saying, hey, I'm here to, you know, talk about a possible partnership with Game Pass or a partnership with, um, you know, you guys making, like, an exclusive franchise for us. And, you know, Bethesda's going, like, oh, we don't really want to do that. But at the same time, like, if you give us enough money, like, we can talk about it. And then, like, you know, Bethesda says, all right, it'll be, like, this figure. And then Microsoft, like, is probably like, well, damn, let's just buy them. Yeah. <laughs> let's just double the figure and buy the whole company or whatever. Like, and then we can just do with what, what, with what we want. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I wonder if, like, this actually would have started to happen if, like, uh, Sweeney would have just gone to, like, Tencent, who owns 49% of the company, of just, like, mm-hmm. do you want to just do you just want to go for it? Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tencent just has a right, you know, like a first offer, like how EA purchased at, uh, Respawn yeah. of just like Respawn yep. took an offer and then EA had in their clause that they could match any offer. I wouldn't be surprised if like that happened. They would just pull the, the cord and then just be like, all right, uh, Tencent gets to match and, any offer. And, and, and then Sweeney just walks out of his office with like two huge suitcases and a backpack and just goes home. Yeah, he's, he's just fine. He just, he just like dances <laughs> yeah, like... out of his office uh, and then just makes a new studio and then just like yep. lives it up. But yeah, it. I guess we'll find out more about this lawsuit over time, just like we did with Apple, which I was thinking back. Mm-hmm. I don't think anything really happened at the end of that Apple one. Yeah, I was talking about it. I was playing with some games with somebody, and and somehow it, it came up, and they're like, have they ruled on that? I was like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it just I, it I, ended. I like the, ruling, the ruling hasn't happened for sure, yeah. but I would, I, would, I would hope, based on what we were reading in the reports of, like, how inept is a bad word, but I guess how, like, uninformed the judge was of the video game industry and the mobile gaming industry is that I'm hoping that this judge during his, her, his or her, I don't remember which, um, attempted ruling is getting huge assets and help in terms of like, hey, this is what I'm thinking and or this is what kind of where my thought is and then somebody with, you know, vast knowledge of the gaming industry is like, well, you know, that does that's not really how that works. You know, indep- independent people or, you know, like a, I don't even know, like a crew yeah. Um, I, I, I get that they I get that they have clerks that could do it. Um, like my wife's telling me there's clerks, but at the same time I think that they need like a like a video game mobile gaming analyst or company that could c- could help the judge possibly. Like almost like how comp- or how uh, colleges or companies use like search firms, you know, to, to hire somebody else yeah. new. I would hope that there'd be some kind of firm um, that would help with some of that stuff because the judge seemed to just not understand yeah they were we were constantly getting reports of just like ways they were explaining stuff and the judge would get caught on certain like insignificant aspects of like the video game industry uh like this is how you put a disc in a console what yeah i forget what it was there was like some really basic (laughs) stuff that they i think they had explained like what a genre like video game Uh, genres were specifically um but yeah uh i don't think we ever really got like epic people said like epic won the trial but i don't think there was ever an official like verdict given or 
whatever they were even fighting for to be to be honest mm-hmm. uh but yeah i just thought that was a, a pretty crazy uh part of this epic saga that's happening right now um all right uh last story uh might be some good news for a lot of people uh According to uh, an investor Q and A, uh, Sony confirmed or revealed that they have acquired enough chips to withstand or hold out during this chip shortage. Uh, what they specifically mean about they have enough stock is they had predicted or projected that they would sell 14.8 million PS5s by the end of the fiscal year, which would be March. Uh, and Ship. they have enough chipsets now to hit that goal. Uh, well, uh, to sell fourteen point eight or to ship fourteen point eight million. I believe they said. I, so I read two different articles, and each article used either shipped or sold. Okay. I so I'm going with well, shipped. Uh, okay. So, which is which is fine either way, because um, when you ship it, you sell it at this yeah. point. Um, but my first concern is like they plan on only selling four million more consoles in the next six months. I guess I'm imagining that <laughs> that seems really low going into the holiday of year two of your console. Yeah, I, depending on the trajectory that you've been going and the alleged inability to get it or the the challenge of getting it. Yeah, especially uh, the console's only been out nine or ten months, so they're basically selling a million per <laughs> per month. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a pretty significant decline in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm wondering <laughs> if in this case. They're, they projected that low number because they knew of the shortage, so they just wanted to make mm-hmm. sure that, like, realistically, with all these companies competing for this, these supplies, that they would be comfortable hitting 14.8. Uh, doesn't mean okay. they won't exceed it as things get better, uh, but they at least are able to hit their goal, which really just matters for, for them and their investors. Uh, but at least right. that means... Potentially, there's 4.8 million consoles out there, so you have a 1 in 4.8 million chance uh, of getting one within the next couple months. Uh, so that's good for, for people still looking for them. That means that like at least you know a number that's out there of available stock in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the last bit that came from that same investor call is they... Um, basically confirmed like hey they we were losing money on the digital edition and the the standard edition uh but that is going to change uh as of i think like immediately uh for the 499 console so the one with the disc drive will become profitable uh for them uh which is pretty early uh for next gen consoles Uh, but it shows you how does it much that disc drive how much of a like profit they make off that disk drive we don't know how much but like that's the difference between those two consoles so it sounds like the 399 one is not profitable but the one yeah which is super interesting to me because it's technically less parts yeah but the (laughs) margins on that disk drive or how yeah or or how cheap the disk drive really is and how much they're charging and how much they're charging yeah now that not yeah it's it's a five dollar part yeah (laughs) it's and there were reports that they've like found a way to make the the digital one lighter um so who knows like what they're doing exactly but it sounds like they're they're making a profit now off the standard one uh which okay we'll see how that shifts uh stores allocations because it's still been very high uh disk drive uh from what i've seen compared to the amount of digital ones you see out in the wild which i th- i thought if i'm sony would be the complete opposite but now i guess like it's you know because we you know we initially thought long-term profits obviously would be better to sell your digital console because then you don't have to pay you know retailers to sell your discs like you 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 sell somebody the digital console they're automatically ingrained in in your ecosystem um uh, this week somebody tagged me in a tweet about you know uh sackboy adventures being on sale and i was like oh it's all disc and i you know mm-hmm. and i can't you know I was, and he's like oh sorry i'm like no it's fine it makes me think and have to have more meaningful purchases i'm i am not you know not a criticism but i'm using you as an example i don't have six games sitting on my desk to my left that are shrink wrap that i haven't opened because i I can't (laughs) like yeah so i have to like look at something and be like oh that's a good price oh it's disc only okay and i just move on with my life because i'm like i can't buy it yeah (laughs) and that's that's why i made the the decision i did with going with the the x and the the disc drive one it's just like 
but you're buying stuff and not playing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but at least I have the option when I do buy stuff super cheap of just being yeah, like, yeah. okay, cool. As opposed to what would most likely happen, I would get that itch to buy a game day one. And because I'm digital and know the store is not going to put it on sale anytime soon, I would put that money down uh, yep. immediately. Which is what I, you know, I, I, I want it. It's not going to go on sale for the next 90 days. I, okay, let's just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like I will probably buy more digital games during the holidays because that's when they mm-hmm. tend to actually do worthwhile sales on new games digitally. Uh, then I might go right. a little more digital then, but like now I'm just a don't enjoy having physical media, which I, I, I think that's a sign I'm getting old uh, or I'm just like <laughs> super into physical media for some reason, um, like game hunting and stuff, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's more profitable for Sony and there will be more coming. Uh, but it sounds like we're, it almost sounds because a, a lot of different companies have been kind of talking about like the light at the end of the tunnel for this uh, chip shortage. And we're definitely getting to that point where we might actually have a decent steady stream of these consoles coming in. Uh, but yeah. uh, Ch- Ch- Chad, Chad Warden in the, in the ch- I just love the new game smell. So do I. I get the same smell when I just purchase a disc or purchase a digital version yeah. of the game. Yeah, I, you just go up to the vents my, of your my, PS5. Like I've got a, I've, I, yeah, I've got a little like you know my you know secretly my PS5 has like a little essential oil fan inside of it. And you make the purchase, it does like a mist. Yeah, and I get the sense. <laughs> the, the magic handle mist. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that that's All it right. for news, and I don't think anything was delayed, but I wasn't really looking for delayed yeah. games. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what we're playing and watching. Um, I'll go first. My list is pretty short. Um, I played pretty much. I mean, I messed around in Destiny a little bit like I do pretty much every week, sadly. Um, and then um, I picked up uh, Zelda Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, the remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what it's what it's technically called. HD, um, I think. So this game, yeah, this game came out on the Wii like 10 years ago. Um, and I am playing it with the Pro Controller. Um Sorry, Chad Warden just put in chat. That's, that actually is a million dollar third party edition. Nike, Nico, Nico new disc smell fan. Sorry. Um, I try not to react to, react to chat live like that, but when I see something, um, I'm tired. <laughs> but uh, so I'm playing Skyward Sword with my pro controller, um, and the sword controls suck. Yeah, I heard uh, someone in a Facebook group was complaining about the controls uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, th- I, I, th- I thought that I could d- kind of deal with it, and I am dealing with it. So right now, the way that, and I haven't looked to see if I can change any of them. I'm just because I just don't really want to mess with it. Um, so Zelda is an exploration game. Obviously, there's like sometimes there's points point in time where you stand still and you're looking around, evaluating a room. Uh, in order to do that in the game, you have to hold down the left, uh, the left bumper. Uh, use it to, to, to then use the right analog stick to look around because the right analog stick controls the sword all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and you can, you know, hold left on the analog stick to swipe, you know, to swipe horizontally or hold right to swipe left horizontally, up, down, diagonals. And uh, the game, the, the enemies that you fight will block or make gestures in a way that you have to specifically hit them in a certain direction with the sword. Uh, when it was on the Wii, on the Wii Mote, it worked pretty well. Um, I can, I can use a Joy-Con uh, if I choose to, and do kind of a similar concept. I haven't tried it yet because I didn't really want to. I was actually kind of looking forward, <coughs> excuse me, to playing this game um, <coughs> without motion controls. Um, but I might go back to it. Turns out, game built um, for motion controls. Uh, Ten years yeah. later, uh, probably needs motion controls. Yeah, the the thumbstick isn't awful, but I I have found myself dying in a couple of encounters that um were specifically the fault of the of the of the thumbstick sword control that which which isn't terrible but isn't isn't right either. Yeah. Um, mechanically, I'm discovering like obviously like we've talked about like old game is old and and, and always looking through rose colored glasses at other games um at older games mechanically the game is 10 years old yeah um but visu- visually they've they've it, it looks 
it looks good. Um, I think it, you know, on my big screen TV for, you know, like I, I don't think it's in 4k. I think it's in 1080. Yeah, 1080. It looks really so, good. Um, yeah. And then, um, story wise, I, I per, for me personally, Skyward Sword is one of, if not the best story functions of the Zelda franchise. This is like the origin story beginning of the timeline of, the 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 goddess and the hero and the the master sword and kind of um the origin stories about um how this cycle has has begun so this is this this is like point one in the in the 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 random branched off zelda timeline um so like that's that like it's always like super interesting to me and playing you know again 10 years later and a kind of reading the story of like processing it, you know, more, you know, where I, where I am currently, you know, in my life, it's, it's impactful. Um, Owen is playing the game with me kind of, um, there are certain times where he's just more fascinated with playing with the sword and running around. So I kind of try to let him, let him do that when I can. Um, and he, like we played about 10 hours combined Saturday and Sunday. Um, and I don't, I don't really remember how far I am or am not in the game um because i don't there's things that i thought would have already happened that haven't happened yet so then I, it's making me wonder like am I, was i initially doing something out of order but zelda is are typically other than breath of the wild are very linear games um linear as in you you do things in a certain order they're still somewhat open yeah. world um but uh overall i i mean i'm pretty happy with it uh, the, one of the main reasons i picked it up is randomly it was on sale at gamestop for like 50 bucks and like it being less than l- less than a month old and being ten dollars cheaper is rare for any Nintendo yeah. game. Um, so that was kind of like that. I was already kind of like wanting it, and that kind of like pushed me over the edge. Like, okay, it's ten bucks, you know, because um, that's what it'll be on sale at like Christmas, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe maybe forty five. <laughs> um, but I mean, overall, I'm happy with it. I, I you know, Owen gets to see some of it. Um, I wish it, it just makes me even want more of a voice acted cutscene driven Zelda game. Like there's a lot of reading, a lot of yeah, reading yeah. and the story is really cool, but you have to read it. You don't get to see it, you know? And I think that Owen would be a little bit more interested in it if it was, even if like, obviously link doesn't talk, but even if it was more voiced over of like the wall, the walls and walls of text that we have, but if you have a switch and you haven't played skyward sword um i would i still recommend it if, if you like story games i recommend it with the caveat of maybe use a joy con i'll try a joy con this week and see if it makes any any difference um but i, I still like kind of just laying on the couch handing the controller back and forth to me and owen to owen and i and and being able to play that and i've kind of just gotten somewhat used to the the combat a little bit and to know that all right i'm gonna mess up a couple times so let's, let's hope that i don't die yeah yeah <laughs> best you can ask for at the, that point and we're, we're definitely um spoiled over the last x amount of years with uh auto saving oh they didn't improve the yeah. uh, saving yeah no, yeah well if you get an amiibo wait what <laughs> if you so <laughs> there's there's a lot of, there's a point in time where you go back and forth from the surface to the sky mm-hmm. The sky is kind of like your hub world and the surface is where you're doing some of the stuff throughout the game. There are bird statues that are save points. And at those bird statues, you can return to the sky. And that, that's also where your checkpoints are. Um, so it's, you don't really get a checkpoint when you enter another area. You get a checkpoint based on every time you save at a bird statue. Um, apparently, with the amiibo, you can um, leave and, and return to the sky whenever you want. And then immediately return to where your player was standing. But you have to have the amiibo. Do you have an amiibo? Not yet. yet. You're going to get one now, right? (laughs) I don't know. Does it have to be a Zelda amiibo or just any amiibo would work? No, it has to be the Zelda amiibo. Like there's, there's a, there's a specific one for Skyward Sword. Yeah. Um, so, and I, apparently that amiibo is slightly challenging to get right now, just because it's a, you know, Skyward Sword collector edition collection piece. And Um, and it's Zelda. Horrible right now to to be in. Yeah. I'm, I'm, kind of considering it um it's nothing like for me it's not it's 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 more of a 
it'd be cool to have as kind of a showcase thing, like a collector's thing as a Zelda fan. And it does something interesting in the game, but I haven't like got to the point where, damn, I, it, it's not something you could do in the original game. You couldn't just go to the sky whenever you wanted to. So this is a new thing yeah. that they that they put in the game, and then they put it behind the amiibo. So it, it's always the case of what I what I've always talked about. I'm okay with this kind of functionality when it's in addition to, not in replacement of. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, and I'm watching Ted Lasso season three. Um, it's just, and the thing that sucks about watching, or I'm sorry, Ted Lasso season two. two I think we watched episode three. Um, <laughs> my wife said seventy six dollars on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, no, you're okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> um, the thing that sucks about watching Ted Lasso currently being up to date with Ted Lasso is I can't just watch four or five episodes in a row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um. I still, I, I, it's a, it's a great show, and I wish you would just watch some of it. It's just like I'm playing. I just need it. I need, I need an hour. I need an hour out it's of your an time hour for show one week. Two? No, I'm saying that's two episodes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I need an hour. Maybe, I uh, maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm. We'll talk about what I'm playing <laughs> a little bit, but it's like I'm, I'm kind of yeah. consumed uh, by certain games right um. now. I'm good. Uh, like watching, like I think Angela and I were going to watch Suicide Squad, but I was I was too tired on Friday, and then she went down to Kentucky and back on Saturday and Sunday. So um, that might be something. I've seen a little bit of mixed reviews on Suicide Squad. I think I saw that you watched it, so you might talk about it a little bit, or we can transition into it because I'm pretty much done anyways. Um, I, I feel like it's a love hate. Yeah. Uh, so I I loved it. I thought it was really mm-hmm. good because it didn't take itself serious. But I think mm-hmm. that's where you're seeing some of the hate like the people that are entrenched in like the Snyder serious uh, DC mm-hmm. universe are, they're not going to be happy uh, with, with this suicide squad uh, because of it doesn't take it so serious. It doesn't really fit into any of the specific timelines outside of like, it doesn't even really fit in with like birds of prey uh, in terms of mm-hmm. like where Harley ends in that movie and how she ends up in this movie. It's kind of just thrown out. Like, let's just have fun so I, if you're trained in the MCU, like every movie's building towards another movie and built upon the previous movie, this doesn't do it for you. And if you are a right. like a Snyder cut fan who's like, I want my superhero movie gritty and dark anthology. comic. Yeah, <laughs> if you want gritty <laughs> void of humor you're not going to get that with, with the suicide squad. So I really liked it as someone who doesn't really like DC movies. Cause it was just, it was, it was just fun. It was silly. Uh, it's it, the, it feels like unlike the first movie where they're like, let's just make this. Let's, let's see if we can like do a really, uh, I, I don't know. Let, let's see if we can take the concept of the suicide squad somewhat seriously and try to have some jokes in there. Um, and this is just like, hey, the Suicide Squad's a stupid concept. Let's just have a stupid movie with it. And it's enjoyable mm-hmm. from that aspect, because the idea of the Suicide Squad is not like the best idea. Not necessarily like it's, it's weird. So, OK, <laughs> the Suicide Squad as an idea is fun because it's like, oh, let's get all these like B tier, D tier villains mm-hmm. and let's just put them in their own story. And they're the protagonist. That's an interesting concept, but in the world of DC and even in the comics, it makes no fucking sense why the U like why any government would hire some shitty villains to right. do their bidding. And I feel like they find that balance in this movie of just like, hey, good concept, but in world bad concept. Okay, well let me let me ask you this question: Would you and your significant and your partner gone? And, and drop twenty twenty five dollars on the movie at the movie theater on this. So if I knew it was going to be this good, or as someone who's been burned by like the last five DC movies, because you saw you saw the trailer for Suicide Squad on a on a Thursday afternoon and it came out on Friday. Are you are you doing a date night on Friday or Saturday to the movie? No, theater? because I've seen the last like four or five DC movies and they've okay. all disappointed me. So I would have waited for this one. So. So now, with it being HBO Max, and next year, when we get another James Gunn movie, or in two years, another, I don't even know, another DC movie, because of your impression of Suicide Squad, would you go to the movie theaters next year for the next 
Movie. I would see a James Gunn Suicide Squad 2. Okay. If you're like, are you going to see The Flash next year? No, I'm not going to see The Flash because it's okay. you know, in, in that universe. Uh, okay. If that, if that makes any sort of sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I have to record. I'd be... Yeah, I'd be really curious of like what HBO Max's numbers are. Yeah, they don't like, reveal in terms it of like they don't... going going up or going yeah. down. I've read some stuff that they, I read some stuff today or saw some stuff on social media today that it it was like number one in the box office, but it wasn't doing yeah like obviously it didn't do like Black Widow numbers, um, but it also was like it, the the perception I got from reading some of the headlines was it was slightly disappointing, yes. but at the same time this other variant is just this Delta variant is sky high like and and it just. It was really bad timing for yeah, them. But in also, terms of in the, in the it's movies, it's free so. on HBO Max as opposed to right. Black Widow, which was a thirty dollar right download or thirty dollar to access yeah. the stream. So, like, there's even less incentive for people to go to the theater outside of right. for their public, you know, for their their. Well, and I think you can still get like a free seven or ten day trial for HBO Max if you haven't had it yet. Yeah, I don't know if so, they fix that workaround where you can't get access to those movies if you try and do it the same week. Okay. But but still, like, it's a way better deal than it was for like Disney. Uh, yeah, we get we get HBO Max at home because we have uh, AT and T cell cell phone service. Same, I, it I, just comes. Comcast gave yeah. me a, a year free uh, with my internet. Right. So. It cost me it's nothing. The, it's the same reason I have Apple. It's the same reason I have Apple TV because my daughter bought an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so Suicide Squad talk there. Uh, my playing and watching really has been the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, me and Sarah have been playing a chapter like every night. We're on the fourth episode because uh, the game's broken okay. down into ten episodes. It's like five episodes per game. It's a remaster of two games. So we're in uh, episode four, still enjoying the hell out of this. I actually might like it more than the original Ace Attorney trilogy. Uh, just, there's more variety uh, in the cases and what you have to do uh, in those cases, at least in the first four trials. I, I'm hoping uh, they continue to throw curveballs and add mechanics to it because I still have six more episodes to go. So, of course, my opinion can change around episode eight or nine of like if I have to do one more of the things that I'm excited about now, I might be, you know, uh, I might have a different opinion. But I I think Ace Attorney, the great Ace Attorney Chronicles is like really fucking fun. Uh, the, the animated cutscenes that they occasionally throw in there are really beautiful. Uh, I... No Ace Attorney, the the regular Ace Attorney had an anime. I'm kind of curious to see if the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles had an anime. If it didn't, uh, that's that's a shame because it's a way more interesting setting being in like Victorian London uh, for a majority of the game. Uh, there's a lot going on. It completely has messed up me and Sarah in terms of uh, one of the characters is named Herlock Shlomes because they didn't have the rights for Sherlock Holmes. And we've been reading and saying it <laughs> so much now that we are kind of worried when the time comes and we have to actually refer to Sherlock Holmes that we're not going to be able to do it. And people are going to look at us weird to why we confuse the name. Um, and uh, Angela just asked in the chat, is that a game I could play? That's totally a game like you can play. Like that is a straight up just like investigation game you have to just pay attention to what people are saying to like find contradictions in what what they're doing it, it is very much like a point and click adventure uh kind of game uh so definitely uh would be fun to play and it's on i think it's on switch so yeah playing it handheld wouldn't be too bad uh because the uh the first ace attorney trilogy is definitely on switch i'm, I'm pretty sure the great ace attorney is uh, as well um, then the other game I've been playing, uh, has been the Back for Blood, uh, beta that went down this weekend. Uh, I was just, I was about to, uh, pre-order Back for Blood so I can get access to it, but turns out if you're in the alpha, uh, they just rolled you into it. So I'm playing it on PC. It is crossplay. Uh, so most of my friends nice. are on console. Couldn't hook up with them, uh, just cause of scheduling. Uh, so I've just kind of playing it solo. Uh, but... The one thing I, I, I don't know if you remember, Dave, I told you I was concerned about like the card system 
in terms of like, is it going to be an issue? Is it going to be exploitative with like how they handle it? And in the beta, it's actually, it makes more sense and it's actually a fun tool set to work with. Um, though they did add now like currency that you can pick up in game, uh, which I'm sure that means I can purchase it with real money when the actual game comes out. Uh, and that's where we might get some issues. But because it's a co-op game, I'm not really too worried if like people I'm playing with happen to have bought more stuff because that's just going to help me out in the, in the end game in terms of like, hey, we're playing co-op, so it doesn't matter if a friend is super souped up because they threw money into it. Uh, so I'm a little mm-hmm. less worried about like the card system because the card system is actually pretty intriguing in terms of building the deck and what abilities you can get from those deck of cards to help you through stuff especially as you get into the higher levels uh di- a higher level of difficulties like the card stuff can be very valuable because there's like cards of like hey add five percent health um give you an uh, like a one-up sort of thing and uh variances like that like your ammo is a little bit stronger you have more stamina so uh that at least in the beta has been adding to the experience um the beta also did reveal uh like in the alpha you just loaded into the missions in the beta there's actually like a hub world like you your mm-hmm. your character is part of a camp and that's where you can like go into like the versus mode or the main campaign uh, or you can shop for cards and like test out weapons and i like the concept of an actual like hub world Uh, Because it makes it seem like what the game story is going to be is you and your team venturing out to, like, help out your camp on these missions. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm uh, hoping that's where things are going. But I like seeing, like, a hub world as opposed to Mm -hmm. the Left 4 Dead method, which is just, like, click the campaign you want to play and play it. It seems like there might be more going on uh, with the game uh, in terms of, like, just general setup to get you into those story missions. Do you, th- do you think it's re- you think it's ready for October? I think so. Yeah. Uh, the only concern okay. I, I might have is how big is the campaign or how many co-op levels are there? Because like Left 4 Dead games traditionally have four story campaigns and it's usually like three to five mini mission or like sections into those campaigns. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering how long of a campaign we can expect from it or how many story campaigns can we expect from it? Uh Nice. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I believe the open beta starts the 10th, I want to say. Yeah, tw- 10th or 12th, I thought I saw yeah, like this weekend. Yeah, so I- I'm looking forward to having more people on it, and then I'll, so I'll probably just download it since it's the open beta on Xbox uh, instead of PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dumbass is so used to the Xbox controllers requiring dongles that I never realized that, oh no, the Series X just has basic Bluetooth in it, so I don't need to plug in my series x controller into my pc uh felt super fucking stupid yeah and there's actually like and there's actually uh, i i didn't realize this either because i i do similar uh with the controller on pc um because i was like oh it's a pain and they, there was some video i saw whether xbox put it on twitter or i saw it on youtube where because like i i think you can actually like click the button on the top like click it twice yeah. And it'll it'll go back and forth between your Xbox and your PC. Yeah, uh, which is all stuff I learned this weekend, basically, because I was playing yeah. with uh, like my uh, keyboard has USB uh, port on it, so you can plug other things into it. And I was basically running a small USB C cable from the keyboard to my Series X controller, uh, and it disconnected at one point, and I got pissed. And I'm just like, are these really not Bluetooth anymore? Or are, th- are these still, like, the old Xbox controllers where you need a dongle? And then I Googled it and found out, like, no, the controllers from here on out just are Bluetooth without a dongle. Yeah. And I just felt stupid because I've been playing like that for, like, the last... F- since I've had a Series X and have owned a uh, Xbox uh, I, controller. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I partially plug mine into my PC just because I don't have to worry about the battery or recharging it. Yeah. It's since my PC is, like, within arm's reach anyways. Yeah, but so. but now I, I I know my 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 white Xbox controller is on my PC and my black one is on the Series X, so I, I'm I'm good mm-hmm. now. Uh, which means I might just I like that right now I'm in the part. This is this is like the the humble brag where I can decide where I want to pick Back for Blood in terms of convenience, um, and because mm-hmm. it's crossplay, I do not have to worry about it at all, which is really nice. 
uh, because like Sarah, mm-hmm. when when uh, N Walker comes out for Final Fantasy fourteen, I'm not gonna be able to touch that PS five for at least a month. Like that that P- or the TV or the TV. Yeah, so like I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna end up picking up Back for Blood. Well, it's on Game Pass day one, so I'm gonna pick it up on a Series X. But because it's crossplay, don't have to worry right. about like missing out. Uh, with my friends who have yep. all kind of converted to Discord, which is really nice. So I won't have to yep. worry about being out of the PlayStation party. Uh, but uh, that's that's it for me. It's just been Ace Attorney every night cool. and Back for Blood for a f- couple hours this weekend. Awesome. All right. Uh, so we will go on to questions. You can send us questions using hashtag Ask Digital Days. You can post them in the Facebook group, Discord, tweet about us, all that stuff. Um, so Palmer, uh, Ben Palmer writes, um, this is from Michael. Uh, what are your thoughts on the purge going on in the WWE? Seems a lot of longtime wrestlers are getting let go. What's the scoop? All right. So WWE in the last like two years have let go of something like 50 to a hundred wrestlers. Um, they just on Friday, why they were doing the show released 12, developmental talents and then they released a lot of big names the last couple of months i really think they're getting ready to sell within the next year or two uh i think vince mcmahon right now is like 74 um and wwe is kind of on like a they're the most profitable they've ever been but their ratings are at an all-time low and their contract negotiations with some of their networks are coming up uh so Mm-hmm. they signed a, like a, I think like a five or ten year deal with Fox so they're good there um, and then they also signed a deal with Peacock to bring all their catalog to that network uh, but their USA Network deal uh, is coming up soon and their ratings on USA Network at are, are like an all time low uh, I think because of Vince McMahon's age they're trying to hold out and cut as many things as they can from the budget so that their profits can look better when it comes time to sell. Uh, Cause Vince McMahon's 75 mm-hmm. years old. Uh, so realistically he can't run a company for like forever, <laughs> you know? Uh, right. And I don't see the company being the company it's been without him. Uh, even if the last like 10 years, he's been terrible in terms of like creative uh, for the company but like i i really think they're looking to sell there was like reports that they were like hoping disney would make them an offer uh a while ago um disney by the wwe yeah yeah there, there was reports uh because like espn that sounds worse than oil and vinegar. no no yeah no but remember D- espn <laughs> is owned by, yeah. by disney um abc is owned by disney and fox is owned by disney so like disney is a big company that are trying to yeah. consume whatever they can so there's reports that disney or wwe were hoping to be attractive enough for disney and the only way to do that is to like cut as much money as you can in hopes that like you can make your profits look that much better especially most wrestlers are paid anywhere okay. from five hundred thousand to like two million dollars a year so mm-hmm. they've cut about 50 of them in the last year. <laughs> so that's a lot of money right. that they're getting rid of. And it sucks for the storylines and it sucks for like fans. Uh, but like, I, I really think they're just trying to sell. Uh, so like when Vince McMahon. So you're talking like a, like a, like a baseball team owner that wants to sell. He just cuts all his payroll. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. in reality, they're either waiting for Vince to retire or for him to pass. And then they'll just sell the company bank out and then. Like his kids don't want it? Um, I don't know. It's weird. Like, definitely Triple H uh, wants the company, but I don't know if Stephanie McMahon or Shane McMahon realistically want the company or they would just want the billions of dollars that they would end up getting from this company. Um, mm-hmm. So Triple H, as the son-in-law, doesn't really have much say, <laughs> you know, in this in this scenario. Uh, so, right. and realistically, like, wrestling probably will last forever but like i don't know if it's gonna get another billion dollar deal from fox uh so uh i think we're gonna end up hitting a point where like nbc universal uh ends up purchasing them because they already did that deal for peacock uh but there's your wrestling talk (laughs) all right uh and then 
typically every week, every other week, Stefan Wren sends us a question, always, which is always appreciated. Um, what is your favorite childhood childhood cartoon show? So um, go ahead, Michael. I was gonna say I, I, I was just talked for a little bit, but um, I. Uh, would... I mean, I, mine's pretty basic. I don't have anything like crazy. It's just and the one that I remember the most is just Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Like I always wanted. It was always on at like three o'clock when I came home from school, three thirty. Um, I always liked watching it. I had tons of the action figures and like the blimp and and the toys and um, and I still have, as you can, you know, like like I said earlier, like my tangible desire for like a rock steady Ninja Turtles or a good, cool Ninja Turtles game um, is is high. I, I want to buy like the DVD set of those um, those uh, original Ninja Turtles cartoons from like the late '80s, um, which I think was only like four seasons. It wasn't like, a lot, but weren't was there seasons a, yeah. longer back then than traditional shows? I think so. I think it's I think it's still like sixty or seventy episodes, so it's not like the ten seasons that were or ten episodes yeah. that we're used to in a season now. But um, those box sets are like three hundred dollars. Is it not streaming on anything? It has to be, right? No. Uh, uh-uh. I don't know who owns the rights to it or who doesn't own the rights to it anymore, but it's not on any like it's not on the who. I mean, at least last time I looked, it's not on the Hulu's, the Netflix, the Amazons of the world. It's not. It's not on. It's Paramount just not a thing. Plus? Do they not own the rights for the old. I I don't think so. They own like Nickelodeon owns the new ones, um, which aren't terrible. Like the new one yeah, isn't I've seen bad. Some of them. They're, they're, but uh, they're not, yeah, they're not bad. I just I I just um yeah so. Uh, Curry Master puts He Man. Um, I'm not as old as you, Curry, but I, I appreciate that show. Oh, it said it, it lasted um, ten I, seasons. Oh, really? So it's weird. So on Wiki, they refer to seasons one through seven as a comedy, and then seasons eight to ten as a drama. That might just be so okay. weird editorializing. And I, I know it, they, at, at, at one point in time there was like the box set came in like the turtle van. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, like in the in the turtle van, um, and then I, I, a close second, I guess, would be Voltron. Voltron, yeah, I I like the Voltron mm-hmm. toys because uh, my brother had basically like let me have those Voltron toys afterwards. Uh, mm-hmm. So I I only remember Voltron as a a set of toys and not a TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the new Netflix one is pretty good. I haven't gone back to it, but the the Voltron on Netflix I heard is really good. So yeah, uh, for me, because. Uh, 90s kid it's um hey arnold uh is Mm -hmm. definitely like i still reference that show like Mm -hmm. way too much i guess doug would be up there too for me so yeah so i used to really love doug but doug has the arthur issue where he is just a whiny little fucking annoying (laughs) protagonist like Arthur and Doug are basically the same character and Mm -hmm. like I love Arthur like I grew up with Arthur uh but like even I like as a kid would be like Arthur's got to fucking chill this this kid's got a problem and I have the same thing with Doug where sometimes Doug it's like damn it Doug if only you were as cool as Arnold Arnold isn't really whiny he isn't bitchy Arnold's fucking cool character so hey Arnold (laughs) is like number one and like number two would be like Angry Beavers, which was just a weird cartoon for children mm-hmm. uh, that like mm-hmm. when you go back to Angry Beavers, which I think is on Paramount Plus, uh, it's one of those shows that you like go like, oh, they a lot of these jokes aren't for kids, uh, but mm-hmm. they, they got I away feel like stuff. that <laughs> our gap, our, our our brief gap in age uh my version of Angry Beavers is Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and Ren and Stimpy was even weirder. But Ren and Stimpy also had that yeah. weird thing where sometimes it was on Nickelodeon, other times it was on MTV. Uh, but they yeah. all would end up just on Nickelodeon eventually to where it's just like, how the hell yeah. did Ren and Stimpy... Why was that a kid show? Uh, right. Like, Rocco's Modern Life also kind of lives in that sphere, but it never yeah. touched some of the stuff that, like, Ren and Stimpy did. Uh yeah, yeah, that like, that was uh, when I sound like an, uh, an annoying boomer. But like, like that's like, when the good stuff to- was like, happening. To- like Toast Man showing his ass off on a cartoon. Yeah, or something the, like the weird episode <laughs> where like I, a traumatizing episode is when like uh, Stimpy like got stuck in his belly button or something like that. Where like mm-hmm. some weird, bizarre shit uh, back yeah. then. Yeah, uh, but it was really good. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's it for our questions. Um, for some reason, I can't find my mouse cursor. That uh, is. That's because my 
battery powered mouse died. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, you can, uh, you know, obviously, like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, just follow us uh, in the show notes anywhere that you that that links up there, Facebook, uh, Discord, all that stuff. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash digital days gaming. One dollar tip jar, three dollar Discord access, uh, five dollar 24 hour early access to the show and seven dollars bonus episode. Um, and um, I think that's all that I have this week. So probably some more Zelda next week. Um for me, for me um, I can't think of anything that's coming out. Yeah, there's nothing. Well, Back for Blood will be open, so you'll probably download. Yeah, that. Back for Blood. I'll probably try to mess with that a little bit. Yep. Um, I don't know. You got anything else? No. Uh, it's, um, there's ten episodes of Ace Attorney, so I'm just gonna be playing Ace Attorney uh, a lot. And then uh, Dave from men- uh, Summertime Gaming. Yeah, Dave from Philly mentions Hades is coming out for playstation on xbox on friday so i'm probably going to get back into hades uh it's going to be on game pass day one so uh most likely i will probably pick it up there even though they're not adding anything to the game but i'll be able to see it in a higher resolution than i did on the switch uh so that, that should be nice uh but yeah i think that that's the only thing i'm really like looking forward to is more back for blood uh getting more ace attorney time and then uh probably do hades oh uh 12 minutes comes out i believe on the 12th oh, yeah. uh, so that's a big game I'm, I'm excited to play cool all right um i hope everyone has a great week uh keep moving forward i'll be a dick see ya